Okay, so uh, you know, Sheikh, we've been discussing you know how this religion brought ease for us, and we talk about the importance of salah, you know, combining prayers, all about salah, and why we shouldn't you know just take gambles and play about with it. One thing that was brought up last night, and I wanted to ask you about since you're here, anyways, I wanted to talk to you know uh, the differing views in the way people pray salah. Uh, you know, surely, you know, the importance of salah shouldn't all of us as Muslims try and ensure that we're praying correctly, or how does the ruling fall in the sense that? It, is there one correct way or are they all accepted, you know, the, the, the variations in which people pray? You're referring to the young brother that asked uh, Sheikh Uthman Farooq about Rafa al yes. In his masjid, they didn't do Rafa al Yes. but they did it here. Yeah. So why do we pray differently? That's the question pray we're talking about. Yeah. Well, we all have a religious obligation to learn our religion. I would advise you, Achi, Erfan, and all of you young people, and I'm not putting anyone down, don't just rely on what your parents taught you. A lot of times our parents didn't know and they don't know to this day what we're doing, what they're doing. Yeah. And Allah said that in the Quran. He said, well, I can nas la Most of the people don't know. If you follow the majority of the people on the earth, most of them will lead you astray from the way of Allah. And if you look at the children of Adam, most of them are making shirk with Allah. So don't just take what your parents said. So for an example, just to come back, don't, don't let me forget this question. When we combine... We pray Maghrib, and then we're going to pray Isha. So therefore, clearly, you're not going to pray any Sunnah prayers after Maghrib. So some people, emphasis was placed as they were growing up. You have to make so many prayers after Maghrib. You have to make so many prayers after Isha. Those Sunnah prayers are important. But when the Prophet used to travel and he was short and combined, there were no Sunnah prayers. Because it defeats the purpose of making things easy. Yeah. Abdullah ibn uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was traveling with some companions. They shortened their prayer. And then some of those people, after saying, Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum, they prayed to Rakas, they got up to pray Sunnah prayers. Now, Wafil, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, What are you doing? They said, We're going to do the Sunnah. He said, There are no Sunnah prayers. We shorten as a Rahmah from Allah. So you don't have to do those extra prayers. So when Prophet Muhammad used to travel, the only Sunnah prayers he did. Mm -hmm was two rakas of Fajr and one witter. He didn't do Qiyam al -Layl. He didn't do the prayer before Dhuhr, after Dhuhr, before Asr. He didn't do any of those prayers. Yeah. He didn't do any of those prayers. He just did two rakas of Fajr and one of witter. Yeah. So now, in this issue about learning how to pray and all the things, these things of this nature, I say, go back and start afresh. So that you can learn. And your prayer is just not the prayer. This is what my father taught me. So you don't know. Raf Ali Adain. And Imam al-Bukhari wrote a book called Kitab Raf Ali Adain. The book of the permissibility of raising your hands in prayer. In four different situations. And he brought all of the hadith of the companions who said Prophet Muhammad did that. But now I come to the religion. Me. And I was with Pakistanis when I came to the religion. And they didn't do Raf Ali Adin. But as I grew in Islam, I saw this was in the religion. Then I was asking if people were teaching me. They said, we don't do that. I said, why? Why? Is it, is, aren't we supposed to? Fight? They said, yeah, but we don't do that. That's not our medhat. I'm not against your medhat, but I'm supposed to be following Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi So to answer the question, listen to this. Allah mentioned in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا you have a perfect example in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's an example to be a father, a brother, a friend, a statesman, an orator, a da'i given da'wah. So we should follow him. Mm -hmm. Allah Taala mentioned in the Quran, "Ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum min rabbikum wa la tattabi'u min dunihi awliya." Follow what was revealed to you by your Lord, the Quran and the Sunnah. And don't follow your leaders, this imam. Follow the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the hadith, Prophet Muhammad said, If, if, لو كان أخي موسى حيًا واتبعتموه وتركتموني لدللتم ضلالًا بعيدًا 
If my brother Musa came back and he was alive and you people chose to follow Musa and you leave me, you will go astray. And Musa is one of the five major messengers. And Musa is mentioned in the Quran more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by name. And his story is more than any other Nabi. But the Prophet said, if you follow him and you leave me, you're going astray. What about following some sheikh today or some sheikh yesterday, even if we respected them? Mm -hmm. So the Prophet has to be followed. As it relates to how do we pray, we have to learn how he prayed. Mm -hmm. So one day his companions were in the masjid. He got on his member, he faced the Qibla, and his back was to them, and he prayed. He stood on the member, he said, Allahu Akbar, he bowed down, Rukur, he stood up, then he got off the member, then he bowed down on the floor, the way we bowed, he stood up, got back on the member, so he could be elevated, and everybody could see him. He got down, and then he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, after illustrating the prayer to them. He turned around to them and he told them, Sallu kama ra'aytamuni usalli. Pray the way you just saw me praying. And he said that to the men, and it's applicable to the women equally. Pray the way you just saw me praying. And all of those companions saw what happened that occasion. And they prayed with him five times every day. For how many years? Hmm. So they did what? The companions described his prayer to us. Why is there so many differing opinions? Like what? How? If, if there's so many recordings. So the companions described the prayer to us and they told their students, Prophet Muhammad lifted his hands here. He lifted his hands here. He lifted and he did this and he did that. And he read this and he said that and he said that. Mm -hmm. So why are there different opinions? First of all, we should know the companions, they explained to us what he did. Because in the last hajj of farewell hajj, his last hajj, he asked the companions, have I relayed the message? Allah made me the messenger and he told me to give you a message. Have I relayed the message at hajj before he died? They say, yes, you relayed it. You didn't hide anything. So Rasulullah relayed the message that Allah gave to him. And then his companions who learned from him, Relay the message. But the companions are not masum. They're not infallible. So one companion can narrate something that could be a problem or goes against something else. But we can sift through that and find it out. And then those companions taught the people and then they taught the people and they taught the people. And that's where the issue starts to change. Yeah. I saw recently on social media, they were in Pakistan because they had Sirwa al khamis it was a long line of about 20 people and they were, you know, facing one direction. So you came to the last guy in the line and you, what did they do? He, he did some, oh yeah, he was, he was um, like wiggling himself like a dance. Really? You wiggled to him so that he could copy what you did. He was wiggling himself. They didn't have any rhythm though. <laughs> they didn't have any, they, they were real stiff. Yeah, yeah. So he wiggled. Now, this guy wiggled. He touched the guy in front of him. He turned around and he wiggled. He touched the guy. He wiggled. But each wiggle was different from the one because of the style. By the time it got to the front of the line, you know what the guy in the front did? The guy in the front did like he was a soldier. It turned into that. Okay. It's like the game, you know, Chinese whispers. Chinese. It starts it. And that's what happened. Not so much Chinese whispers, but as... Next generation comes, next generation yeah. comes that. It changes. Yeah, yeah. The, the information changes. There are yeah. problems that come. So that's natural. But we can always go back to the source because Allah Ta'ala, he has protected this religion divinely, divinely. So you can always get back to the source. And there are some issues where there's difference of opinion and those differences of opinion are okay because the prophet did it in different ways. Sometimes he used to say in the prayer, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh -huh. Sometimes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. He would say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then he would say, sometimes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Too. And then he would say, Assalamu alaikum. 
So there's variation. Variation. Yeah. They call it ikhtilaf al You can do it different ways. Salat of janaza. Hey, sometimes he would do five takbirs for the Eid. Sometimes he would do seven. It was different, different things that he would do. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala ali. When he start the prayer, sometimes he would say, Allahu Akbar. Sometimes he get halfway and say, Allahu Akbar. Sometimes he say, Allahu Akbar, and then raise his hands. The 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 Dawood al Sharif, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. There are different ways of saying that. Surah Al Fatiha. You can read it. Uh, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahman Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Maliki Yom Al Din with the elongation. Or you can say Maliki Yom Al Din. Okay. The different Qiraat of the Quran. Umar heard a man reading Surah Al Hadid in a way he didn't know. He took that man to the Nabi. He said, he's reading the Quran in the way I never heard it. Just because you never heard it doesn't relax. Just because you don't know it, don't be an enemy to it. Mm -hmm. Ask the man, where did that come from? Yeah, I never heard this recitation, Ya Rasulullah. This guy is introducing. Let him go, am I relax? Okay, man, you read the Quran. He read the surah. He said, now you read it. Um, I read the surah. He said the Quran was revealed like this and like that. It was a reveal for seven ahrafs. But look what happened during the time of the companions concerning the Quran. During the time of the companions, they wrote the mushaf down. Yeah. He had one written. He had one written. He had, but then they started to appear contradictions and issues. So during the khilaf of Uthman... Uthman said, any and everyone has a Quran, bring it to me. And he burnt all of the Qurans that were on the face of the earth with the companions. All of the Qurans. And he just kept his, the one we have right now. And that's called the Mus'haf of Uthman. But other companions had Mus'ahif that had some differences from this one. So Umar stopped that. Uthman stopped it. And you can read about that. In the book that the brother wrote, it's one of the best books that has been written in English. His name is Yas Qadi, Dr. Yas Qadi. May Allah increase us in guidance and increase him in guidance. But he has a book called The Sciences of the Quran. Okay. That is one of the single most important and beneficial books in English today. And it will give you a chapter of what happened with that. So it's our point. Okay. It's our point. So now, as it relates to praying, there are things you can do differently in the prayer. No doubt about that, because the Prophet did things differently. But you can learn how to pray. Uh, where would some of these sources be? How could I personally go out and find out about this information of you know the, the proofs and the hadiths and the dalil? How, how would I find this stuff? Well, you guys, I don't want to ask how old you are in public, because you may not be comfortable with that, but... You definitely look younger than what? You're about 18 or something like that? Me? Yeah. You're joking, are you? You're joking with me, are you? 23? Yeah, 23. Yeah. Wow, oh, man. You're a baby, Irfan. Wallahi, brother. You are a baby, man. Allah Akbar. May Allah give you long life, man. Amen. And give you prosperity and longevity. Allahumma amin. And bless your dad and your dad's dad and your mom's and your mom's mom's. Allahumma amin. You guys have been blessed and cursed simultaneously and that you have this social media. Everything is at your fingertip. So right now we can go in there and we go to share Google and we put it in there and I say Islamic hijab and it'll come up. The verses, the surahs, whereas 25, 30 years ago, I'm a new Muslim. I want to find out about the hijab. I have to go to the table of context in the Quran that's been translated in English by Yusuf Ali. Muhammad Yusuf Ali. May Allah forgive him. Put him in Jannah. Mm -hmm. But that translation was a problem. The translation, it was the old, it was the it was the Queen's English. We don't talk like that. Oh ye, oh far out thou, oh Juliet with Romeo. It's to talk like that. We don't talk like that. But his commentary was a problem. So back then. If I want to find what does the Quran say about the hijab, I have to go to the table of contents. It may be there, it may not be there. What I'm looking for. I want to look for something about the Dajjal. 
I go to the, no Dajjal in here because Dajjal is not mentioned in the Quran like that. But if you go to Sheikh Google, Google, the woman's hijab, and you're going to get a lot of information. Too much. Too, Too much. much. It's a good point. And that's why I say to you guys, I say to you guys, whenever you research something on the internet, you should always put the hijab according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Put that term in there. Salat according to the Quran and the Sunnah. You have to put that condition because now you're going to reduce the research. And you're going to get people who it's their business. Anytime they post, they are posting things the way we talk. We try to talk and educate by giving them proofs, not just talking out of the side of our necks. Mm-hmm. Guy get up there, he'd be talking 30 minutes in the chuppah, 15 minutes for the chuppah. You don't hear a single ayat. You don't hear a single hadith. He's just talking, his story. And then I went over there, and the sheikh went over there, and then we ate ice cream, and the ice cream fell on the floor, and we saw these ants. They congregated around the ice cream, so the sheikh didn't want to kill the ants. He was merciful to that. Man, I ain't trying to hear that story about you, mm. you shaking the ants in the ice cream cone. I ain't trying to hear that. Yeah. So go to Google and say, according to the understanding of the salaf, jihad. If you put jihad in how to make jihad, You'll get ISIS, Boko Haram, everything will come, good and bad. You'll get the everything. No. Jihad according to the understanding of the companions. And then that shrinks the information and causes you to zoom right into what the issue is with the proofs. So, Allahi, brother, you guys, you Shabab, you guys in a position to really learn your deen. Learn your thing. But the best way is to, you know, find someone who knows what he's talking about and do it the old traditional way and go to the masjid and learn from that brother. Learn from that yeah. sister. They know how to read the Quran. They know about fiqh. They know about this. Then you make the time and the sacrifice to go and learn. That's the traditional way. Because if you read on your own, even from the internet and books, if you read like that on your own, then you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Which you're is bound to, happen, bound to happen. But, you know, we talked about that brother last night, Sheikh, just quickly. No, uh, take your time, my brother. He said he's from, you know, the brother that asked the question, surely at the masjid that he's at, possibly he's never been taught that. So if he goes to a person of knowledge <coughs> that he knows, he probably won't get relayed that information that we were talking about last night. So what should someone do in that situation? Just branch out maybe? or That's why it's really important for us to stay on top of our prayer. Because when you pray and you make dua, ihdina as sarat al mustaqim. And then at the end we say, I mean, you're asking Allah, guide me to the straight. But I don't want to be a straight. When I accepted Islam, okay, I was a non Muslim. And without making dua, actually I did make dua. I remember I was a non Muslim and I made sajda. Turned out I wasn't praying towards the east. I didn't make sajda. <laughs> I just was in a place mentally where I needed guidance. Yeah. My life was jacked up. With the violence and the stuff that was going on. And I had enough. I had enough. Every time I tried to get out, they wanted to pull me back in. And I had enough. So I fell down to the ground. And what was prostration? Was it the correct prostration? With my heels together as the prophet used to prostrate? Seven body parts on the ground? He told the people, pray seven body parts on the ground. Your head and your nose, one. Your two hands, three. Your two knees, five. And the tips of your toes. And his heels used to be together. That was his prostration. I didn't do that prostration. I just was on the ground. Yeah. And I said, oh God, please help me. Guide me to what is true. Allah guided me to Islam. I became a Muslim. I'm reading Ihdina Surah al When I was a Muslim, I didn't know what I was doing. I would pray and I'm just doing what the man doing next to me. I, I didn't feel it. But I had to make it my business. I'm making dua. Oh, Allah, I don't want to be confused. Pakistanis are telling me one thing. The Arabs are telling me another thing. The Africans are telling me another thing. Every ethnic group of people are telling me something else. And I was like confused. And I asked Allah, oh, Allah, open up the door for me. And then I got an opportunity to go to Medina. And then when I went to Medina, I learned the language first. And once I learned the language, I was in a position where now I can go to the source myself 
and understand better and understand more. And it was a work in progress. I just can't go to the Quran and read on my own. I still have to look at the tafsir, yeah. but, but it's all in Arabic. The sheikh is in Arabic. And so I begin to develop. So now I think I'm in a position where I can listen to an issue. And for the most part, I can understand. But there's some issues till today. They're bigger than me. I'm not, I'm not giving people my opinion. I don't know what Bitcoin is. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I say, go ask Dr. Sheikh Asan Hanif. His forte is fiqh. That's not my forte. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I say, it is a challenge when you're young and you don't know what to do. It's important. If you're not praying, if you're not praying, then your sila, your connection with Allah is cut. And Allah sends you astray. But Allah doesn't break his promise. He promised us. If you do the right thing, Anyone who has taqwa of Allah, taqwa, Allah will make a way out for you of your problem. And provide for you where you don't know. Another ayah said, Verily those people who make efforts in our cause, mm -hmm. Those people make jihad. They make efforts. You try to learn, Allah will guide you. The hadith said, O son of Adam, Allah said, Hadith Qusi, O son of Adam, If you come to me walking, I'll come to you running. Meaning you make an effort, you make just make the effort. And Allah will give you the means and the ways like Maryam. Maryam had the baby. She dropped a baby. She just had childbirth. She's done. Some women after praying, they can't even walk. They're disoriented. Mm -hmm. They're in a lot. They can't walk. The nurse has to get her out of the bed. And they have to help her. Maryam had a baby by herself. And Allah told her, the angel told her, shake the tree and dates will fall down. You and I together are not going to shake a tree of dates, a nakhl, and the dates come down. It's too strong. Mm -hmm. That's one woman. She shook the tree and the dates came down. That story is telling us, you just make the effort mm -hmm. and Allah will give you the barakah. Allah will send you. Now, I'm not saying to you guys to be on some old crazy, you know, spiritual thing and you don't go to work and Allah is just going to send your brill and going to come and sit with you. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you have to make the efforts to use your brain. You can't listen to everybody. You can't follow everybody. You have to fact check what people are saying. Like now I'm talking to you. Anything I say, fact check it. This is what we tell the students in our class. While I'm talking, fact check, except doing Juma. I'm talking, giving a lesson. I said the Hadith is Bukhari and Muslim. Fact check. Because some people, they lie. They tell you that a fabricated hadith is a lie. It's inside of Bukhari and Muslim. Prophet Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Abu Hanif is the greatest scholar and that Al Imam Al Shafi is a shaitan. they are hadith like that. They lie. That's quite weird. Yeah. yeah. So, so keep your religion together and people who you trust. Don't always be of those people who just, you know, you just think you're masjid and you're just with that one sheikh and. You'll never know how much your sheikh knows, how much he really knows, until you go to someone else and you start listening to him and comparing what he's telling you to what your sheikh says. Then you can determine, yes, my sheikh knew. My sheikh has more knowledgeable than him. Or, man, this guy has exposed and revealed the reality of my sheikh. My sheikh is a hocus pocus charlatan, lying. A uh, sheikh, brother came to me yesterday after the talk. He came to me and said, Sheikh. He said, yeah, Sheikh. And he looked anxious. And if he's watching this, I'm not going to say who he is. He said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm in the middle of taking uh, exams. And I have a brother who's uh, incarcerated right here in Leeds. He said, and I'm just, I could see he was a nervous brother. He said, can you teach me a dua that I could tell my mother and me and my mother can make that dua and get my brother out of prison. Get him out of prison and cause me to pass the test. He goes to the Sheikh. And the sheikh says, yeah, yeah, I know the, the, the dua, Surah Al-Fatiha. That's why it's called Al-Fatiha, the opening. Al-Fatiha is a dua, and it will open up the way. Ya akhi, sheikh, where you get that from? Who told you Surah Al-Fatiha will get a man out of prison? Because it's the opening, it's the key. Well, what are you talking about? But that brother is so in need and so desperate that he just hears that. He goes to another sheikh, and the sheikh says, yeah, there are some du'as that you can make. 
And he teaches him du'as of the sunnah that are real. Like the du'a that takes anxiety off of you. Yeah. Those kind of du'as. But not that hocus pocus du'a. I lost my keys. Sheikh, how do I find my keys? The word for find in Arabic is wajada. Wajada. He found it. So we have this name, Wajit. Everybody, you have a relative, Wajit? You heard that name before, right? I've never heard of Wajit. Wajit is a popular Asian name. It means the one who found something. So the sheikh says, sit in a dark room, put some incense on, and say, Wajit, yeah, Wajit. Wajit, yeah, Wajit. Wajit, yeah, Wajit. Say that 100,000 times. And he goes and does that. Hoping to find the Hoping because the sheikh said, but he's supposed to say, okay, Sheikh, but where do you get that from? The Sheikh says to you, how dare you ask me where? You should be in front of me the way a dead person is in front of the one who's going to wash him. The Sheikh washes the dead person and the dead person is just there. He's not going to open his eyes and say, Sheikh, 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 don't scrub too hard. Just be quiet and listen. That's not our deen. Then you hear the man say to Abdullah ibn Abbas, Ya Abdullah ibn Abbas, why did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam combine between Azur and Asr and Maghrib? Why did he ask? Because they wanted to know more. So that's basically it. You have to know more to pass it on, don't they? That's how it works. Yeah, we can ask people. Yeah. But we can't ask in the way of, why did Allah tell us to pray? Mm. Why did Allah tell me to wear hijab? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to give zakat? You can't ask in that way. The why of an i'tirad. It's the why of the Yahu, Bani Israel, Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah ya'murukum in tazbahu baqarah. Allah tells you, slaughter a cow. And then they said to Musa, what color cow? How is the cow? How big is the cow? What day should we slaughter? And they started asking questions until they had to slaughter the best cow. Had they just went and slaughtered a cow, it would have been easy. But they kept asking questions. It became difficult. So the Prophet told our community, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Dhuruni ma taraktukum. Leave me when I leave you. You ask me a question, I answer it. Don't go too deep. For verily what destroyed the people who came before you is their excessive questioning of their prophets and their ikhtilaf. Prophet Muhammad came out and said, Allah said we have to make hajj this year. It's wajib. Eighth year, ninth year of the hijra. You have to make hajj now. Previous to that, it wasn't wajib. A man said, Ya Rasulullah, do we have to make it every year? He became angry. He said, Da'uni ma taraktukum. Leave me as long as I just said. I said, if you ask me, I'm, you're going to make me say yes. And then it becomes wajib upon you. You can't do it. And the worst person is the one who ask about something, it wasn't haram, then it becomes haram because of his excessive asking. Mm -hmm. So we have to be his excessive, his excessive asking. Mm -hmm. I have to do that because my wife always tells me, I know you're African American and you guys grew up pronouncing things, you know, the way you do like asking. Instead of saying asking, we say, no, go ask your mom. Go ask your mom. My wife say, ax, you're going to cut him with the ax. I said, come on, man. You know what I'm talking about. Relax. Fall back with that. But she's correct. I yeah, have to yeah, take yeah. the advice. That's the haq. It's the property of the believer. Okay. Uh, yeah. I believe that should do it for now's sake. Alhamdulillah, it's been a long episode. And uh, inshallah, some of our viewers, you know, take this advice about understanding the ease within the religion. Yes. Shukran for having ease. I mean, man, that's an hour's time. Yeah, I'm seeing that's over an hour. We yeah. usually um, don't go that far. No. Alhamdulillah, it was a good discussion there, so I appreciate your shake. Barakallahu feek. Barakallahu feek. Hayatum Allah, Yaqeen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.